Mozambique is a land full of different natural resources. When you look at the people, they are happy. In Beda, Mozambique, we've been on the what four flights now. I don't even know how long it's been. 20-30 hours in airports. We went to Mozambique with a team of mechanical engineering students from BYU. The mechanical engineering department does capstone projects at the end of your senior year. And with our capstone project, we were doing it with a humanitarian organization. And so we worked with this humanitarian organization as our capstone sponsor. Our original goal was to create a sustainable building material and as the project developed that became more focused and we focused on creating a sustainable building material to make a latrine. So you can see this is one of their current latrines right here. I mean at least they have one. A lot of families don't even have one but as you look here I mean, just a very basic hole in the ground type latrine. Just a basic pit latrine. But the problem is it's right by this water, and this water, it's a channel that goes all throughout this community. And I mean, people pull water out of it. It's like irrigation almost looking through the community. The latrine's right next to it, and even though it's not like digging in the water, they probably have hit groundwater in the latrine. And also, there's just seepage. There's no way the water gets filtered out before it gets to there. So this is really all just contaminated by everything that's in the latrine. This is the inside of the latrine. Which is next to the shower, which is... Yeah, which is next to the shower. Which is all the water table. Which is about two feet from the a little stream going by. We have uh, this water that you see in there. That's the level of the water table. Through Care for Life, we learned that one of the biggest problems they have here is with sanitation. And that the latrines they currently have are just pitched in the ground and in the monsoon season um, the pits will fill up and the walls will collapse in so the latrine waste will go out into the streets and will also go into the well water and contaminate it. Quite simply the monsoon season here in Mozambique is an issue. The Mozambicans, when they extract water from the ground, uh, often are taking water from the ground that has been contaminated, contaminated by waste from the latrines that has fallen into the ground, collapsed, and contaminated this water. Care for Life asked for uh, a building material that was zero cost, readily available to everybody in the village, so that it wouldn't exclude anyone. Another corner post. Right. Anything in engineering that is supposed to be at little or no cost seems like it's almost impossible because there's always a cost somewhere down the line. As we started looking at this project, as a team of engineers, we considered, well, what do these people really need? Mortality rates were quite high. People were getting sick, constant sickness. So we looked at all the different structures we could do, and we felt that latrines were truly the most important, the highest priority. So because of this, we decided, okay, let's solve this problem with latrines. Let's make their latrines better. The idea that we had was to take the mud from around a termite mound and turn it into a brick. That mud brick then will be fired. And so by firing it, it becomes water resistant. See here, here's one of the termite mounds we're using. As you can tell from all the foliage on top of it, they're abandoned right here. 
Why the termites making these mounds, they don't pull out the big rocks and they keep the clay content pretty high. They bring out the smaller particles. So we get all of the silt and all the clay in these mounds. And this is the perfect brick making clay. Well that shows that we have a high clay content. If I took a, a ball of sand, um, it would compress tighter and tighter and a little bit might extrude out, but not very much, not the whole ball. I mean, that's high clay content, which is great for firing bricks. And what we found with these termite mounds, Jared, is they aren't waterproof. They're barely even water resistant. What happens is they build the mounds up. When it rains, a lot of the outside mound saturates with water and it washes out. You can see this area, it's like it's all elevated two or three feet higher than the surrounding area. So this is all high clay content soil because it, it washes down, they build it up. It washes down, they pull the clay out of the surrounding soil and build it up. So you have this huge mass of high clay content soil. So one termite mound can effectively serve a lot of people. So we're looking here at our kiln design, what he did. He made this tunnel kiln as you can see and covered in mud. We started out with 800 bricks here, so we're just analyzing how the design actually works since we weren't able to do it with termite mud in the States. So we chose an angled brick, we put angles on the design of our brick because when we put them side to side, it will create a circle. Inside the latrine, we backfill it and it um, actually creates pressure and a continuous arch um, around the entire circle. What this did is it allowed us to hold the, the latrine together with no mortar because the pressure from the surrounding dirt is what holds the the latrine together. We also had a new system for them to use that was called the fossa alterna, which means the alternating pit. So you have two holes and you have one latrine that you use for a year and then you switch to the other latrine. As you're using one, the other one is decomposing. When you use the latrine, you would add dirt and ash and leaves. By doing that, then it helps the decomposition process happen a lot faster. By keeping the latrine short, only about a meter deep, it keeps it above the water table. So we're not going to contaminate the water table by digging a traditional 2.5 to 3 meter deep basic latrine. Today was awesome. Uh, we prepared this morning to teach care for life, and they all came about noon, finished up the preparations, and everything went perfectly really. It couldn't have gone better. We got everyone together at the beginning, explained the importance of it. We went through each rotation, how to go to different sets, how to make the bricks out of the mud, how to build the kiln, how to fire, and then actually how to make our structures, how to make the latrines. It just went perfectly. The people responded really well to it. They all, we had some guys even taking notes, even though we are giving them literature. They really were wanted to learn to make sure they knew how to use these latrines. Then at the end, I mean, they even threw a dance for us. They prepared it. Yeah, so